Ortiz, why Menya was not accustomed to waiting. A former Miss Venezuela and Miss Universe runner-up, of course, the exceedingly blonde, strawberry blonde was this days the wife of Miami Auto Parts tycoon, Herman Ortiz Y. Menya. And at every restaurant she chose to grace with her presence, she was always greeted with reverence and whisked to the exact table she desired. Today, she wanted the corner table on the terrace at Sip Sip, her favorite lunch spot on Harbor Island. She wanted to sit one of the comfy orange canvas director's chairs and stare out of the gently lapping turquoise waters while eating her kale Caesar salad. But there was a large noisy group taking up the entire terrace and they didn't seem in much hurry to leave. Bettina fumed as she glared at the tourists, happily savoring their lunch in the sun. Look how tacky they were, the woman overly tanned, wrinkled, and saggy. None of them properly gifted or botoxed. She felt like walking up to the table and handing out her dermatologist's business cards. And the men were even worse, all dressed in all ruffle shirts and shorts. Wearing those cheap straw hats sold and trinket shop on Dunmore Street. Why did such people have to come here? The three and a half mile long paradise with its pristine pink sand beaches was one of the best kept secrets in the Caribbean. A haven for the very rich, filled with clean little wood houses painted in the shade of Chervet, charming boutiques. Chic ocean front mansions turned into inns, and five star restaurants to rival St. Bart's. Tourists should have to take a style exam before being allowed to set foot on the island. Feeling that she had been patient long enough, Bettina stormed into the kitchen, the fringe on her crochet pushy crafting top shaking furiously as she made a beeline for the woman with a shock of pixie cut blonde hair manning the main stove. Julie, honey, what's the deal, yo? I've waited more than 15 minutes for my table. Bettina sighed to the owner of the restaurant. Sorry, Bettina, it's been one of those days. The party of 12 on the terrace showed up before you did. Julie replied as she handed off a bowl of spicy corn chili to a waiting server. But the terrace is your prime spot. Why on earth did you let those tourists take up all of that space? Well, the tourist in the red fishing cup is the Duke of Glencora. His party just boated over from the Windermere, that is Royal Hisman, you see moored off the coast. Isn't it that the most handsome sailboat you have ever seen? I'm not impressed by big boats, Bettina huffed. Although, secretly, she was rather impressed by people with big titles. From the kitchen window, she surveyed the party assembled on the terrace with new eyes. These Aristo-British types were such a strange breed. Sure, they had their Savile Row suits and their heirloom tiaras, but when they traveled, they looked so painfully frumpy. It was only that then that Bettina noticed three tan, well-built men in fitted white t-shirts and black Kevlar pads sitting at the adjacent table. These guys were eating, but sat watchfully sipping glasses of seltzer water. I assume that the Duke's security detail? They couldn't be more obvious. Don't they know that we're all billionaires here in Berlin? And this isn't how we roll? Bettina tutted. Actually, those bodyguards belong to the Duke's special guest. They did the whole sweep of the restaurant before the party arrived. They even searched my walk-in freezer. See the Chinese fellow sit at the end of the table? Bettina squinted through her New York State sunglasses at the party. All dealing with something Asian man dressed in a nondescript white short-sleeved golf shirt and trousers.
Oh, I didn't even notice him. Am I supposed to know who he is? Mm -hmm. <gasps> That's Alfred Shine, Julie said in a harsh tone. Bettina giggled. He looks like their chauffeur. Doesn't he look like the guy that used to drive Jay Wayman around the Falcon Crest? Julie, who was trying to focus on Suri, a cut of tuna to perfection, shook her head with a tight lipped smile. From what I hear, that chauffeur is the most powerful man in Asia. What's his name again?